friends, welcome to Tori Talks TV. I'm Tori. And I'm Dr. S. Today we'll be reviewing Little Fires Everywhere, Episode 7. Uh, this is the penultimate mm -hmm. episode. And holy mother of pearl. Sorry. Mother of pearl. Was a, Good one. Everybody's rolling their eyes in unison. <laughs> uh, this episode proves that secrets are where relationships go to die. <laughs> There's a lot of things that... Well, that were revealed, but also mm -hmm. like a lot of secrets that were kept that if they had just been revealed, maybe things would have gone differently for people. I mean, ultimately, yes. Uh, well, it begins in July of 97. And then mm -hmm. this is where we get to see what happened with Izzy and April. Yes. So mm -hmm. they had been like hooking up. Or like even more than hooking up, I feel like they were in a relationship. Yeah. Like, like it seemed love. loving. Yeah. That's really sad that April has to, uh, in public you know, scream molestation. Yeah, that's terrible. That was really I know. Sad. I really felt, I, Izzy, I totally feel for her because from the get-go, as we learned in the previous episode, she wasn't wanted and now she like was in love and now her friend just like turns on her. Isn't that sad? And I thought there was hope after Izzy left her a note and then they met up yeah. and she seemed like apologetic. But then mm -hmm. when Izzy is uh, selling Cabbage Patch Kids, mm -hmm. <laughs> then April again is like, you know, Puts yeah, her down. That peer pressure really gets to her. I guess so. Oh, my gosh. Let's just talk more about Izzy. Poor yes. Izzy. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about Elena and Izzy. Mm -hmm. Gosh, Elena is crazy. That's <laughs> legit crazy. The name of this episode is Picture Perfect mm -hmm. because she thinks that she everything has to be picture yes. perfect. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like just the, the, the Christmas card photo yeah. scene, she lashes out at her. It was very so, uncomfortable. I was like, poor Izzy. Like, all I kept thinking this whole episode was like, poor Izzy. I know. And she's like, how come everybody else gets a nickname? That's a good point, Moody. That is a good point. But she doesn't get one. And she's like, well, you're not like the others. I mean, Izzy never stood a chance, basically. No. And Elena takes Izzy's actions personally, too. She does. I don't care how much your kids annoy you. Do not say that it is hard to be their parent. That and was don't, so cruel. Don't cut them out of Christmas cards. That was so cruel. And if you do, expect them to be a little bit difficult with you. I mean, Izzy's, Izzy's like like a punk. Like, she, like, gave the finger in the picture. I thought that was kind of hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I understand why. People might not have even noticed that, honestly. Yeah. It was just a little... But then she, like, cut her out of every picture. Like, how do you think that's going to make her feel? And she found the. She found the. Um, that's really sad. Well, Izzy goes to Mia. Mm -hmm. How she just, how did she just get into her house? Well, before when she was doing, like, her art apprentice thing, yes. I think she let her in. So maybe she still has access. Okay. Maybe. Something like that. I, I don't mm -hmm. care. That's fine with me. Because they do have a very good, tender moment together. Mm -hmm. Um... I really appreciated that. Mia, very, she was very comforting to her. Yes. And she says to her, um, we all have to face the darkest pieces of ourselves, even when we're afraid. That was That's really good, good advice mm -hmm. for anybody. I thought it was really funny when <laughs> she was like, I think I hate my mom. And then Mia goes, I think I, I hate your mom. <laughs> and they like bond. And so he, I really liked Mia in this moment. Yeah. Because it was like, she was just connecting with Izzy, who needs somebody to connect she, with her. The, yeah, she really so. needed that comfort. Okay, let's get into the real meat and potatoes of this episode, which is the trial of B.B. Shaw versus the oh, McCulloughs. Yes. Yeah. The mm. biggest part is this standoff between Mia and Elena. Mm -hmm. Elena. In the bathroom. Elena's, I think she might be evil. She is. I think just the vindictive nature behind everything she mm -hmm. does, every motivation she has. What is wrong with her? I understand she Elena's is her friend. She self-righteous. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> She's a meddler. She's a controller. Literally stay out of it. Mind yeah. your business. Controller is right. Yes. Oh my gosh. And when, oh my gosh, when Bill, her husband, the lawyer, had the option of like basically taking Mia down, mm -hmm. he didn't. No. He didn't drag her through the mud. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that was a big moment. And um, Elena was so mad. And <laughs> I kind of liked how he was like, just sit down. Oh, that was, thank you. I it just, was just like a small moment that I was like, oh my gosh, please. Like, normally I don't like men to speak to women that way. No, but it wasn't but even a, it wasn't a the gender right, thing. It's it just, wasn't the right thing to do in no. that moment. Like, that's not the place to play out that your personal vendetta. Like, this mm -hmm. is like, oh, 
a child is at stake. Right. You know? Oh, my gosh. And so just I was like, like yeah, just, you tell her. I know. I was happy for Bill standing up for himself. Well, I mean, obviously, he's probably a little upset mm -hmm. with her. He knows she was up to something mm -hmm. in New York. Yes. So, besides that, though, I think he was being a professional. I mean, yeah. we can't completely love Bill. He does say that people like B.B. Chow don't win. Yeah. I don't know if he's being realistic or if he's just being... I don't know. I know. It, that's the part of this show that's so interesting, though, is that was he being realistic? Was he just saying, like, that's like, well, like, did he have commentary on it? Or is he just stating a fact is of the world? statistical? Yeah. We don't know enough about him yet to say, like, he, if he, like, we know enough about Elena to mm -hmm. know that she's racist, both explicitly and, like, underlying, where, like, she doesn't realize some of the things right? she says are racist. But with him, I don't think we know enough yet. So that was, like, something that was open to interpretation, I think. Yeah. True. Well said. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's move on from that and talk about Pearl and her rendezvous with Trip. Oh. In Moody's hideout. Like, yes, that's that was place. low. Okay. I was kind of on the fence about them because, you know, you can't control who you like. Although you can control the secret keeping. Right. That's the, it's more secrets and lies. Mm -hmm. Why didn't she just come out and say, Moody, I'm so sorry, but I don't yeah, like you. Exactly. I like your brother. And then don't go make out in his, his hideout. On like, his turf. <laughs> that's just rude. Yeah. And then while they're there, um, Tripp tells me or uh, Pearl about Mia paying BB's uh, lawyer fees and mm -hmm. that she got this money and she's like, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. And then the confrontation between Mia and Pearl... I don't have a picture of that. I'm so yeah. sorry. I searched high and low. I can't, I don't, can't find one. Yeah. But that was tense. It was tense. And to kind of see Mia back down because mm -hmm. she saw how upset Pearl was, was a big moment. It I can was. imagine a mother feeling that way. Like, okay, I have to give her a minute. Yeah. Yes. She was so hurt by, I don't know, what was she hurt by? The secret keeping, right? Yeah. It's again the secret keeping. Because she told her that, you know, I did pay for the the legal fees because I sold this picture. She's like, we could have had a better life this whole time and I didn't have to sleep on the floor and you lied. Yes. And yeah. That's what it was. I know. And I still can't, like, I feel for Pearl finding out that her mom kept the secret from her. Um, At the same time, I'm like, she seems so motivated by like, like shiny things. You know, so then I feel for Mia because Mia's like, I gave you like memories. Yep. I gave, you know, we have, all, we had fun together. I gave you what, what did she say? Like what you needed? We need, we, we had what we needed. Right. And then and Pearl has always seen like the other side, like the rich people and has like longed for longed it. So, for it. oh, I feel so torn. Of course I like, you know. The whole show. Yeah. Torn. Oh, exactly. <laughs> but yeah. So then. They uh, go to spill the beans about the relationship, right? Mm -hmm. They they went to Tripp's house, and uh, before they could do that, Elena pulls Pearl aside. And did mm -hmm. she really just tell Pearl what her mom? We're not a hundred percent. We're not right? privy to that information, right? Yet. Yeah, it but, looks like but it. What uh, did she? So I'm wondering. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like if she really did, we would have just heard it. I mean, she was upset. She had to mm -hmm. uh, hug her. She, obviously. Something very crucial was said, but the fact that they didn't show us mm -hmm. makes we didn't me think hear it. Like, I wonder mm -hmm. if now that you know she's back home, maybe Mia thinks that she told, and then she's gonna tell. One oh. of those like, oh, I would have told you myself, but and then she'd be like, what you tell me what? Yeah, you know, no, that's true. So I don't know. Oh, but the look that that uh, Elena gives Mia after she drops her off. I'm telling you, it's evil. It's evil. <laughs> There's some madness in that woman. Yeah. And Mia's like, oh, I... Yeah. I, it's like defeat and then like, no, I'm going to have to take you down. Yeah. But I wanted to talk about one other thing. Uh, Lexi and Brian. This was a really big scene. Mm -hmm. it had to do about, you know, interracial couples. And I mm -hmm. think it was interesting. It yes. was like, I think, something that needed to be... I'm glad he finally broke set. up with her. <laughs> Okay. She's like relentlessly self-centered, yes. out of touch. She's kind of Elena 2.0 yes. in the making. But she blames Elena for her... True. Like, I can see, okay, yeah, your mom pressures you to exceed, but you can't, you don't just absorb her, like, ideology and don't be critical of it and, like, blame her. Right. Like, you could have made different choices. You have choices. You didn't have to, like, borrow the racist story of a classmate Stole to, it. like, 
Yeah. Stole it. <laughs> to like get, yeah, stole it. Because exactly. she got accepted. Yeah. At and Yale. she still doesn't see that it was wrong. She doesn't think that's a big deal. It's terrible. And the, how rude she was to that fast food worker. And she's like, oh my gosh, oh that my was gosh, terrible. To see what happens when they don't go to college. And Brian's mm-hmm. like, what do you mean they? I mean, what is up with her? I, yeah. I mean, it's disgusting, yeah. really. But yeah, Brian had had enough and mm-hmm. he finally uh, broke up with her. But you know, discrimination never seems to be a big deal to people that don't experience it. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. That's the whole exactly. point of this. Mm-hmm. And I mean, who are we to say what somebody should be offended by? I right. mean, if you don't know, if, if, if you know, yeah. if you're not in somebody else's shoes, how do you know what offends them or not? And you can't dictate that. Right. And if you offend somebody, you apologize. Right. <laughs> and she's never been in the situation to know how people respond. Like when he calls her out on like, when you tell people you got into Yale, they're like, oh, congratulations. When he tells people he got into Princeton, they think all these other things. Because of his, his, yeah. his race. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So... Yeah. It was just, I, that was a very important scene that I had to highlight, but sure. good, good. I'm glad he dumped her. This was, <laughs> Finally. Seriously. I think he would have dumped her sooner, but then she like jumped on him in the car. Gotcha. Yeah. And then. He's a teenage boy. Yeah, I know. I know. And you know, she didn't tell him about the abortion and it's like, would things have gone differently if she did? And I don't know. That's this like the whole theme of this episode is like, what if you would have told, what if yes. Elena had told Bill about her meeting up with Jamie. I don't know. Like, yeah. would things have gone differently for these people if more was revealed? If she had told him that she was, like, drowning back when Izzy was born and that it was, it was like, she was struggling, yeah. maybe that could have been different, too. Instead, she just became a robot. Yeah. It's just... A crazy robot. Uh, yeah. Out of control. <laughs> out of she control. She gets worse every like, episode. She needs to be in so much control that she's, like out of control yeah exactly right well yeah. let's we, we only have one episode left and this is where we're gonna find out who started the fire can i tell you my theory yes please do they do a great job of showing the house with all the christmas lights on it mm-hmm. i think the christmas lights set the fire oh like <laughs> like an accident yeah like a spark like a oh. like an electrical fire But in the first episode, though, (laughs) didn't they say that they find accelerants? Little fires everywhere. Yeah, like in different places. Literally, yeah. I want to say, okay, so we uh, forgot to mention that Trip, like, was about to talk to Moody, but didn't talk to Moody. Oh, like... There's another thing. I liked that scene where the four siblings, like, wound up on the couch together. Sitting there sulking. Yes. Yeah. They all have different things going on in their heads, and nobody knows. Like, they're, like, four. They're so close sitting there on the couch, but no one knows what the other people... Are going yeah. trip. Yeah. Yeah. And I still, I don't know why, I still think it's Moody. I was going to say, I think if it's a person, it's Moody. Mm-hmm. He's just like reaches breaking point. And he doesn't That's like funny. speak up so for too. himself. Mm-hmm. And I think like. That's his way. Yeah. Because he's betrayed. He got and betrayed. It, he really did. And in the first episode when they're standing there watching the fire, it's Trip and Lexi that say like, oh, they're going to blame Izzy for this. But I don't remember them like. Moody having any mm, say anything about it. So yeah. maybe he's keeping quiet for that reason. Of course they want us to believe it's Izzy, but I don't think so. I don't think so either. I but, think that was like the easy first choice. Because right. she burned her hair. Yeah. And then like Mia burns art. So maybe yep. that was good. I never never thought it was Mia. No, I didn't either. No. no. I thought it was Elena because of the look in her eye. She wouldn't do that. No. And then. It's a bad I, look for her. I'm landing on <laughs> Moody. I like it. Okay. Moody one more week or Christmas lights. <laughs> that was probably just Moody a- with the Christmas lights. <laughs> oh, that was probably like an artistical thing where they just wanted to show the house lit up like as if it was on fire. Christmas lights. Yeah, it's probably all it was. <laughs> Those opening credits though are so good. I could never fast forward through them. I have to watch them. I've watched They're the whole thing. Mesmerizing. Yeah, maybe I, I like to look at fire. <laughs> Pyromania. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And then we're going to see you next time when we review the series finale. Yeah. Because there can't be a there season can't be two. a sequel. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we'll see. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. Bye bye.